Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, I'm Debbie Weiss, and I'm here to help you navigate the cesspool that is middle-aged dating. And today I'm on a positive topic. I want to talk about how to find love. And for me, finding love meant throwing away my list. Um, when I first started dating after being widowed, I was, I'm, okay, I'm embarrassed to confess this. I was an aspirational dater. I wanted someone who was kind of like someone I aspired to be. I have two graduate degrees. I'm a lawyer and I have a master's in writing. So I wanted somebody with better degrees from more prestigious institutions. And I wanted somebody with more resources. And I wanted somebody whose resume I admired. But none of that really worked. Um, you know, it was a problem because I was looking for a life that I could co-opt. Uh, my late husband and I weren't very social, so when he passed, I was pretty isolated. I didn't have a lot of friends. I felt very alone. And I was looking for someone whose life I could slot myself into and just kind of pick up from there without having to sort of do the work of my own to create a real life. I was sort of looking to see how I reflected off others. What kind of men was I attracting? And it all resulted in a disaster when I wound up dating this fellow who was uh, much older than I was. Tons of resources, um, a couple of gorgeous homes, an Emmy Award, a music foundation. Uh, and for all those resources, extraordinarily cheap, negative, critical of me, rude to people in restaurants, uh, salespeople, all in all kind of a disaster. And, th and that's what I got because I was looking for someone who had all this really extensive life and circles of friends that I could just join and it never worked. And I had to realize that just because somebody was overtly successful, that doesn't make them have good relationship material. It doesn't make them a good bet for a relationship. Some of these folks are too busy. Uh, some of them are mansplainers that they are cut up in their own achievements. Some of them really don't have the breadth to recognize another person's achievements. And just because someone's successful doesn't mean they're any more or less mess emotionally messed up than anybody else. I mean, we're all a bit older. We all have our own baggage. And just because somebody has this astonishing resume doesn't necessarily mean those, tra those qualities translate into a relationship. And finally, I, I met someone who was wrong for me. He contacted me online. He liked my tennis shoes. They were vans with skulls. And I looked at his profile. He was really athletic. He did snow skiing and water skiing. I personally don't like things where the ground comes up to meet you. This, this was not anything I wanted to do. Um, his job to him was a way to do the things he loved, the sports, um, surfing. He was into surfing. I don't do that. He believed in the benevolent universe that provided. Um, ever since my husband died, I've probably a bit more on the negative uh, view of the universe. I think it has a very complicated sense of humor. And he was also into astrology. And if you're wondering, he is a Scorpio. I am a Leo. And this was supposed to result in a very passionate union. But then again, I don't believe in astrology. His profile was pretty minimal and it said, may you find friends and lovers and more, which to me meant he was probably hoping people would look past him to find those folks other places. But you know, on our first real date, it was um, an eight hour, actually a 12 hour drive uh, through the hills of Marin, stopping in his favorite restaurants. And I loved it. He was so positive, he was so upbeat. At the beginning of the date, he gave me this little book with pictures of the ocean little illustrations and positive sayings, and I owned nothing like this little book. But I was so charmed that he gave me something that was meaningful to him that he thought I'd enjoy because I like being by the water. And that he was secure enough to give me something that meant something to him without worrying that I thought it was silly. You know, if that didn't please me, well, that was my loss. He was secure in himself. And we kept going out and I kept thinking, well, this has no future, but I kept seeing him because he was so sweet. And when I spent time with him, it felt like I'd been basking in the sun for a few hours. And he was also very chivalrous. He was one of the few guys who made an effort to pick me up, make sure I got home safe. He didn't push for anything physical. Actually, one of our first trips was a very romantic overnight in Carmel where we used, had two rooms. Um, 
And he was just so charming. I, I kept going. And what I realized was that my idea of fun, what I was looking for, wasn't really very enjoyable. You know, why did I want someone like me and why did I want someone pretentious? Must love the films of the Nouvelle Vague, nihilistic existentialism, and early but not later Haruki Murakami. I mean, why did I need someone who thought the way I do? I already did that. And I think that a lot of us daters make the same mistake. We're looking for people who have certain qualities, but those aren't necessarily the qualities that we need. I mean, we don't need somebody super successful, but we do need someone who's caring and loving. Or we don't necessarily need someone to provide for us. We're older, I, I can provide for myself, but I do need someone who really cares about me and who could be invested in me. And once I realized that, my search for love became much easier because love was just love. It, it wasn't connected with all these other um, qualities of career or friend circles. I had to do that for myself. Love could just be on its own. And with this fellow, I had a lot more fun with a lot less superiority. A lot of those geniuses I dated, including Mr. Emmy there, tended to put me down and make themselves look better. It wasn't really any fun. And I realized also that it was much better to learn a new way of being. I mean, this fellow followed positive thinking. I still don't do that, not my world. But it's so much better than being with someone else who's a nihilist. So if you're looking for love, my best advice is to throw away your list because love might not look the way you think it does. It might not have the, the correct resume or wear the loafers that you wanted or live in the kind of house you were dreaming about. But it might have some of the core values that you wanted in the first place, and that's so much more important. And that worked for me, by the way. Mr. Opposite and I um, have been together three and a half years, although I still don't believe in astrology, but I'm charmed when he talks about it. So that's my advice. Look beyond what your list is to the qualities within, and may you find friends and lovers and more. Thank you, this was Debbie, and I hope I helped you navigate the cesspool that is middle-aged dating. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.